now. There we go. All right. Sometimes it does. It, it has a mind of its own. Amen. Um, I'm going to sing an old song to you today. Um, Mom used to sing it, and I grew up listening to it. And I'm going to sing it because I'm old. It's old, and I'm old. So that's why I chose this song. I love the words to this song. It's beautiful. It's called My Sins Are Gone. Amen. Uh, we'll do the key of C. Is that a big surprise? <laughs> You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness. From dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness, it's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Twas at the old time altar where God came in my heart, and now my sins are gone. The Lord took full possession, the devil did depart. Praise God, my sins are gone. There underneath the cross of the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn, in the sea of God's forgetfulness, it's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Amen. I, I hate having to read the words, but I don't know this one by heart just yet so I added I did my own writing did you like it it was beautiful <laughs> all right your our sins are gone and that's what I want to minister to us this morning uh, I didn't realize that the word covenant would be used in in your announcement Lori and in some of the things you discussed and I want us to turn to the book of Hebrews this morning uh, I've got some things I want us to go through before we uh, we are going to serve communion today we are open communion. You do not need to be a member here to, to partake in communion. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, we encourage you to celebrate the Lord's Supper yes. with us. Amen? Amen? Turn to the ninth chapter of Hebrews. I'll give you that, and then uh, we're going to get started here shortly. Uh, Misty, do you have the picture that I, I sent you, hon? Did you put it on? Could you put that up for me? I just think I want to start with something kind of fun today. How many have been long-term church attenders? How many of you have attended a church potluck or two in your life? <laughs> what gives people the feelings of power? Money, status, and leaving a church potluck with an empty casserole. Right. Amen? Yes. Amen. I just thought we could use a little smile this morning. Amen? We'll leave it right there. Thank you. You can take it down. I saw that and I thought... You know what? We are born again believers. We're not born in to be sour pusses. We're That's born right. to, to have the joy of the Lord. I want to speak to you this morning about covenant. And I want to talk to you about the old versus the new covenant. We are new covenant Christians. Amen? And uh, I think the beauty of the covenant, a covenant that's put into, I don't know that Orville has any, maybe Veranda Beach would have them. Uh, but a lot of housing developments will establish covenants to protect somebody from painting their house bright purple with pink stripes or whatever. There's a covenant of protection for all in that group. And the blood covenant of Jesus Christ protects us as believers. Do you believe Amen. that this morning? I'm grateful for that covenant. And the thing that I'm the most grateful for about the covenant that Christ established for us we don't choose who comes into the kingdom. What if that was an option and you were having a bad day and you didn't like someone and you just didn't want them in the kingdom of God? Would you want your eternity left up to someone else's emotions? I certainly would not. I'm grateful that they are by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. I'm grateful that my eternity in Christ is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is not by opinion. It is not by someone else's choice. 
but is my choice to follow Christ. The old covenant between God was between God and Israel, and it is you can find it and look at it and research the history of it in the Old Testament. The new covenant was between God and followers of Jesus Christ. And we are new covenant Christians this morning. In the old covenant, I'm going to give you some verses here, not verses as in verses to read, but differences. The old covenant required sacrifices. In the new covenant, Christ sacrificed everything for us. The old covenant had external external standards and rules. Everything was how things were seen, and there was an outward um, offering, and we saw that, and it applied by rules. The new covenant is eternal standards. Aren't you thankful? We have a new heart and in the internal standards. Amen? The Old Testament had limited access to God. I know that, you know, I... I had, you guys just, I got a sense of humor and that's just how I roll. But what if this was Old Covenant and you came here today and I wasn't in the mood mm -hmm. to usher you before the Father? What would you do? Because you would have relied on, in the Old Testament, you relied on the, the priesthood or the leader to bring you before God for a sacrifice. And what if I wasn't in the mood and you were desperate today? See, that's the beauty. We don't rely on Old Covenant. We, and I would never do that, first of all. But we, as believers, every born-again child of God has unlimited access to the Father. Aren't you grateful for that? It's not by how someone else does for us. It's what we can do for ourselves when we have a repentant heart before the Lord. Amen? The old covenant was available to some, and it had a lot of rules and regulations. The new covenant is available to all, and it simply requires a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for that this morning. I don't know if you are grateful for that or not, but I am, and I will continually be thankful that the Father sacrificed his son for my sins. Let's read Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Let's look at verses 11 through 14. Father, open our hearts and minds today to understand the importance of that we are new covenant Christians and that we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We give you all praise. Help your word find lodging in our hearts today that goes home with us for this week and we give you praise. Amen. Verse 11. But <clears throat> excuse me, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. Aren't you thankful for those scriptures? I know that there's times all of us, to, we will read a scripture maybe with a little haste. But when you stop to think of what these scriptures mean to us, these scriptures engage you and I in a personal relationship covenant with Jesus Christ. Christ is the perfect offering for our sins. I'm thankful for that this morning. See, it's only the blood of Jesus can cleanse our hearts. Amen? There's nothing else. You can read self-help books. You can do all you need to do. You can repeat certain things. There used to be a young man in the city that we used to live in. He suffered with mental illness. And every time I would see him, I would always engage and speak to him. And he would say, just thinking good thoughts, thinking good thoughts. Because he was trying to keep his little heart and mind. He struggled. But see, what we have is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses our hearts. Amen? The other thing that the blood of Jesus Christ does through a covenant with us, it clears our conscience. Anybody? 
Come on, have you made any mistakes? Don't raise your hands. I'm gonna give you an out on this one. Any mistake makers in the congregation and you've dealt with a guilty conscience or you're troubled by something, the blood of Jesus Christ and your covenant relationship with him clears and cleanses your conscience. And God can forgive you. I'm gonna ask you this today, forgive yourself. If he can forgive you, you can certainly be mindful enough to forgive yourself for your mistakes and your shortcomings. The other thing that it does, the covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ, it frees us from sin so that we can serve God. Amen? See, in verse 12, the word uh, redemption is used. It says redemption for us. Redemption is the process of paying a ransom to free us from the slavery of sin. Amen? You've been redeemed when we sing, I'm redeemed by love divine, glory, glory. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There is a price that has been paid for your freedom. Don't take your freedom in vain. Don't live dangerously with the freedom that Christ has gave you. Don't, I, if I'm around you, you guys know me better and better. Uh, I'm not, I don't want you living on the edge of what's good or bad and freedom. I want you to be free in Christ and listen to the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your mind and you come into compliance with what God's asking you to do as an individual. Now, we know this, and I want to just touch on this briefly. It's not in my notes. It's free. If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in, in you and he is dealing with you on a particular issue in your life, He's going to deal with you. Amen. And he will always have his word available to, to, I would say, to document for proof what he's asking of you is correct. Now, bear with me. Nobody get mad. And if you do, don't all try to get out the double doors at once. If God is challenging you in an area of your life that could use a little tidying up, it may not be for everyone around you. So, in my nicest way, keep it to yourself. As my mother-in-law would say, you sweep off your own back porch first. Don't work on mine. But ask the Holy Spirit, because see, in my life, there's little things that creep into my thinking process, little attitudes that show up. Anybody, anybody got attitude? Come on, come on, we get it. If you're not, if you haven't had it yet, you will. <laughs> But see, I have to deal with my issues. Now, here as a pastor and, and leading your congregation, I'm, I'm, I want to always minister what God gives me. But I also have to be mindful. Sometimes when God's working on something in me, someone else may not be ready for it. And he may not be working on it in their heart just yet. But I can tell you by example, if you will allow the Lord to do that process in you, someone around you will notice something different in you and their lives will be changed. Do you believe that this morning? Let's see, look at Hebrews. We're are you proud of me? I stayed in the same book today. Yeah. Hebrews 10, and we're going to read scriptures 19 through 22. We have a process. We've recognized that Christ is our once and only sacrifice. There remains no more sacrifices. And there is a process that Christ wants us to walk out this morning with him. Amen. So let's read 10, 19 through 22. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which we had consecrated for us, through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. The blood of Jesus comes in. And it cleanses all the stuff that needs to come out of your heart. And he glows over you and he washes you with living water. He cleanses you from the inside out. Amen. I'm thankful for that. I want us to be mindful today. We're going to take our communion here shortly. 
I want us to be mindful of some things. There remains no more sacrifice. If God gave his son for us, that is enough. But sometimes us humans like to create something that we feel will move us into a better position with God. You know what will move you into the best position with the Father is just obedient. Just be obedient to his word because there is not another sacrifice available. It's already been paid. I'm thankful for that. The thing that we do as New Covenant Christians, we're living by faith. Aren't you thankful? We live by faith. That's an old song, Trust and Confiding in His Great Love. Maybe we should add that to our music. I don't even know the words of it. Somebody will have to help me. But we might need to add that. Because what? We're living by faith. We're trusting in God. He established a new covenant with us. I'm thankful that we are free from the rules and regulations of Old Testament. We don't throw the Old Testament out. It has many things for us that are valuable and very important. But we are living by faith today. And I want you to think of this today as we get ready to take communion. The price for each and every one of our sins that is in the sound of my voice today is already paid in full. There's nothing else that we can do but receive what has been paid in full. God bless you.